Welcome back, software engineers. In this series, we are looking at how to build a piece of software from scratch in a short amount of time using software engineering principles. In today's session, we're going to look at how do we do requirements gathering and what does that really mean? If you remember from our previous video, one of the things we talked about was picking our project. What was it we were going to create? Well, requirements gathering often goes hand in hand and is done at the exact same time. In this, we look at several very important questions. Number one, who is our target audience? Is it a person? Is it a company and a group of individuals that work in that company? Is that company big or small? Is that individual doing it for fun or to save themselves some hassle? For example, maybe the difference between doing something like a tax software application versus an online game. So understanding who our target audience is, both in who will be using it as well as who will be purchasing it. Now, our example with an online 360 review system means that a company is going to purchase it, but it's going to be used by the employees and the employees may have some pushback on it. So we're going to have to find out ways that we can learn on how to incorporate that to make them want to, or at least be willing to follow through. As you know, simply saying, well, management says you have to usually isn't a really good way to make that work. So we're going to have to figure out how is that going to be? Now, the second thing that we're going to do when we deal with requirements gathering is going to be looking at things like, what does it have to do? And in which case we need to start asking ourselves, okay, what are the major core features that we're going to have? Now, there's a couple of different ways that we can get this information. Let me show you them. Now, I know there's some things that we need to know about this. And we picked this project actually because it's something that at my work, we've been talking about implementing some sort of online review system. So I know there's a need, but there's a lot of other questions I have to ask. And so I've gone to Google and you can see this right here. You can see where I visited a lot of these different websites and I've started pulling information. What's the best software? What makes it the best? Some of these are really helpful. For example, this article on Forbes advisor has not only a ranking from one to five stars, but also has things like what's the starting price? Is there a free trial? Is there a mobile app involved and other things like that? And can I just kind of scroll through and start to see these are all important things because you have to answer the question of, Hey, can I do this? And can I do it for the price of what other people are finding? Now you'll also notice that, Hey, I'm seeing even some of the best of is not even four stars. So clearly there's some room for improvement. And so a lot of times we don't have to invent the wheel. We just need to make it better. And this is a perfect example where even the best is showing that there are some issues and things that we need to work on and that maybe we can solve. Here's another example and you can see what type of market they're going after. So here they're going after mostly small business. Here it's mostly large business. And so we want to make sure that we're matching ourselves with an appropriate size client base as well as our software. In my other research, not only do I look for the special types of software you might find, but I'm also going to be looking for what types of questions do I need to ask? What types of features do I need to provide, etc. Another way that we can do this, if I don't want to go online, or maybe in addition to it is I can do a survey. So here I create a simple survey for a 360 review system and I put it out on a Google form. What's a Google form? Well, this is a Google form. It allows me to just simply create a feedback form that I can ask some basic questions. So I'm asking, Hey, are you involved with HR? Are you a manager? Have you used something like this before? What would make you interested in it? What would be something that would make you disinterested in it? And so I just go through a real simple series of questions. I want to keep it short, at least here, 
Now, I do provide an option that they can give me their name and email address. And then if they want to, that lets me contact them for additional deeper information. Sometimes that's helpful. Sometimes that's not. Now, I put this on LinkedIn. You see, I got four responses just off one simple post. Would I do it just off of LinkedIn? No, I wouldn't. I would also put it on my webpage that I might put up as just a simple way to get some additional information, build up some interest, and other things like that. All I'm doing is looking at gathering information from different sources so that I can put together the best possible product. And that's what we're looking at. Now, one thing that you'll sometimes hear people talk about is a product market fit. And what that means is, do you have a product that the market actually needs and can you sell it at a price that they're willing to pay? So just because you have a product that people need doesn't mean that people are going to pay large, exorbitant amounts of money for it. Likewise, you can give stuff away for free. And if it's not what someone needs, they're not going to take it. So you have to find, do I have the right fit for the right price? How do I figure out if I have a fit? Well, I start doing some research and these are two different ways. What are some other ways I can do? Well, in our communication portion of our classes, we talked about doing things like holding meetings, doing surveys like this, going out and doing research groups. Sometimes if you're on a large company, a large product, you'll go out and hire a third party to do specialized research. Since we're on our own, we're going to do simple things like this. Who are you going to reach out to? Well, hopefully people that would be potentially using that software. And if you don't know it, then you have to double down on things like Google to get a good response. Hopefully that's really helpful for you. I think it is. Be sure to tune in for our next video, which is going to be on validating everything we've done so far to determine is what we're doing really what's needed. So stay tuned for that video.